Hi, my name is Gary Hines. I am from Philadelphia. I was born and raised here, but I did live for a brief period of time in California. Uh, in the 70s, like this was 1978, a friend of mine from the neighborhood had relatives and, and family in California. So I was communicating with him because he had just moved out there and he would write me and say, oh, you know, it's so different out here. It's so spread out and wide and open and there's so many interesting people. You should come check it out. I kept saying, okay, okay, well, whatever. I said, maybe I will come and take a visit or whatever for maybe during the summer. So meanwhile, um, I had dropped out of college. I was working, but I wasn't really doing much of anything. Um, still experimenting with the sexuality stuff on the, on the side, you know, the, a very early DL kind of thing. So I would come down to downtown Philly and find out where there was a place that, in, in Philadelphia called the Merry-Go-Round. And people called it that because people would drive around in a circle, in a square, and just so they found somebody to pick up. So I was doing all that kind of stuff back in that uh, time period, and um, you know, still trying to like, oh, I'm straight, I'm straight, I'm, I'm, you know, this is just a little thing I'm doing on the side. So anyway, I said, well, let me go out and check out California. I went out in September of '78 to San Jose, California which is, you probably know, is south of San Francisco. Mecca, gay Mecca. <laughs> that is where I really, really came out. Um, I started getting comfortable with myself and my sexuality because for a town that size, they had at least 10 gay bars, two bathhouses, and, and an adult movie theater. And this was not even in San Francisco. This one night in particular, we were going out to a club called Tinker's Dam which is in Campbell, California, right outside of San Jose. And so this night started probably around six o'clock. And I remember we were all meeting over one of my friends, Joey, over his house, and we were all getting ready. So this you know, easily took two, two and a half, three hours. And it's because we were all ironing clothes. And at the time, um, there were pants that, I don't know, I can't remember the, the, the manufacturer, but they were, they were called Bogarts. And they were really tight at the waist and they had several pleats. So they had like five pleats. So they were tight at the waist, sort of baggy here, and then they gathered it in again at the ankle. So we had to make sure that those pants, that the, 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 the uh, creases were just perfect. So this ironing process took a really long time. And we got into this big argument about the iron and get, hurry up, hurry up. You know, when you, you know we're never gonna get there with this. So we all, you know, had our different looks. Um, you know, I was the only, I'm African-American. I'm the only one there that doesn't have feathered hair, but I, I had my hair longer and I actually had it relaxed. So it did look a little wavy. <laughs> I don't know what kind of look I was trying to affect at that time, but I was uh, probably the Latino cholo look. <laughs> so we ended up uh, getting to the club, a Tinker's Dam, and there was a line to get in as it usually was on a Thursday night. And you know, as you stood in line, the cars came by of the, you know, the homophobes from the area who would throw things at us while we stood in line. Um, I never forget that a, a couple of bottles crashed in front of us, um, you know, beer bottles or whatever. And I, you know, I don't think anybody got hurt or anything, but it was scary to stand out there. It was like an act of defiance to just be in that line because everybody knew what, the, what kind of club that was. Um, Upon getting inside, I just remember the atmosphere there. Of course, there was a big shiny ball, um, you know, with various colored lights spinning around. Smoke was very popular, so the DJ would bring smoke in every now and then, and you know, you'd be all smoked up. People were wearing sunglasses, you know, inside this dark club. That night stands out for me because I just remember how long it took us to get dressed, and sort of the detail that these guys and myself would do on the ironing and the pointing and the, the look and, the, and, you know, everything had to be just right. I don't know, it was just like a revolving drama. I, right now I could just see it being a reality show. That whole time there would be so perfect for a Bravo reality show. The Real Queens of San Jose. I think that's what it would be, it would be a great name. <laughs>